Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ahsoka and more. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So I must admit that Star Wars news has been very slow in the last week and there's not been too much to speak about, but today we've got a very exciting rumour for Obi-Wan Kenobi. For the longest time it's been rumoured that Commander Cody is going to feature in the series. A while back LRM Online reported on this and so did Star Wars news. Net. But these rumours were typically combined with the caveat that he's only going to appear in flashbacks. Due to the nature of what became of the clones after Order 66, especially in light of Project War Mantle, many people assumed that Cody would be dead. But now the guys over at Chatooine have scooped that Cody is going to appear in Kenobi, but not in flashbacks, which basically means that Cody is still alive at that point and he may even reunite in some way with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now they also mentioned in their most recent podcast that Vader's Fist, i.e. the 501st Legion, is also going to play some role in the series. Now on the news of Commander Cody, we must wonder what became of him if he is indeed still alive. A few months ago when the Bad Batch was in full swing, I made an entire video about what happened to Cody after the Clone Wars. But if he is still alive 10 years after Revenge of the Sith in Obi-Wan Kenobi, I wonder if elements of what we think we know are going to be retconned for the better. After all, most of what we know about Cody after Order 66 is Legends, so we do need a conclusive canon answer. Some people have speculated that since the 212th is gone by this point, Vader might have put Cody in charge of the 501st. And even if he didn't, maybe Cody has a greater role in the Empire. Alternatively, and this is what I hope happened, Captain Rex might have gone after Cody and removed his inhibitor chip. If this is the case, then Cody might be hiding out somewhere after the war, and in the Kenobi series, he might reunite with Obi-Wan. This is the outcome I think we all pray for, but ultimately, we're just going to have to find out. Now, if Cody is going to play a focal role in Obi-Wan Kenobi, we must wonder if he's defected or if he's loyal to the Empire. Empire. Either way, this new rumour is really huge because it tells us that Tomorrow Morrison is going to reprise the role as he did in Revenge of the Sith. It was reported very early on in the year that Tomorrow Morrison did film some scenes for Obi-Wan Kenobi and it's also rumoured that he filmed for the Andor series as well. It seems as though he's a very busy man and having played Cody, Django, Boba and so on, it's only natural that Lucasfilm need him to reprise live-action versions of beloved clones. The Polynesian spot. Come on, New Zealand, try something new. So now, my dear Meglorians, we're going to move on and talk about some concept art which has just emerged for Chapter 13 of The Mandalorian, which was the big episode that Ahsoka appeared in. Here it is, and I must say I'm very impressed. And something to take note of are her gauntlets, which kind of look like clone armor. The blue in them reminds me of Captain Rex, who I'm sure is on Dave Filoni's mind for Ahsoka's upcoming spin-off. The ones that she ended up wearing in The Mandalorian were metallic grey and not blue, but it fascinates me that they almost went for a blue look too them, which is very reminiscent of Rex. But this concept art is for The Mandalorian and it just gives you a bit of insight into some of the creative decisions that went into bringing such an iconic character from the Clone Wars and Rebels to live action. So now my dear friends, I'm very sorry to bring you some very bad news. The legendary Clone Wars voice actor Tom Kane has retired after suffering from a stroke which affected his voice. So let's dive into it. Like many voice actors, you might not know what Tom Kane looks like, but Star Wars fans will know his voice. A galaxy divided by war. <coughs> Have you three? I do. Outnumbered, are they? Across three decades of work, he's given the voice to Yoda, Admiral Akbar, Qui Gon Jinn. 3PO, Magneto, Professor Utonium, and Darwin the chimpanzee from the Wild Thornberries. Yoda is easily his most reprised role in the Clone Wars, so if you ever played a Star Wars video game from the Clone Wars to the Skywalker saga, you will have heard his voice. So sadly, following a serious stroke at the end of last year, Tom Kane has been forced into early retirement at the age of 59. His daughter Sam posted this on Facebook, and it's really sad guys because he's so iconic. The damage to his speech center is just too severe. He cannot read well nor get out the words he wants, which is sort of required for voice acting. He has what's called apraxia, which means he has difficulty moving smoothly from one sound, syllable or word to another. Groping movements like with his jaw, lips or tongue to make the correct movement for speech sounds are impaired. Essentially, he knows exactly what he wants to say. He knows exactly what's going on, but the words are trapped in his head. And when they do come out, it's usually too slurred to understand. He has a handful of words that he says perfectly, but just a handful. He relies on non-verbal communication now. Thank God he's an actor and great at 
charades. So this is very tragic, guys. I wish him and his family the absolute best, and I thank him for all of the amazing work he's done in this franchise. Tom Kane's work goes far beyond the Star Wars universe, though. He's contributed to so many shows and video games across the years. So as I say, I wish him all the best. So finally, my dear friends, we're going to be talking about Star Wars Visions, the one show you probably haven't heard me talk about too much on the channel because there's been so much going on in other shows, or rather the build up to those shows. But Star Wars Visions is just a week away. I know there's a lot of people who don't like it. I know there's tons of people who do. I'm somewhat excited about it and I will be doing reviews on this channel. I must say the trailer looked absolutely epic and I am giving it a full chance. I've not really been a fan of anime in the past, but it's really good that Star Wars is branching out and reaching new fans ones who may not necessarily be big Star Wars fans, but are big anime fans and they might be introduced to Star Wars through their medium. And on the other hand, you'll find that there's tons of Star Wars fans who are also anime fans, so this is just up their alley. So personally, as I say, I'm not a huge anime fan, but I am a massive Star Wars fan, as you guys know, and this might change my mind about anime altogether. So let's briefly skim over this article from StarWars.com, Inside Star Wars Visions, meets the heroes. Star Wars is going to a new galaxy of storytelling. Star Wars Visions, an anime anthology featuring nine shorts from some of the world's best anime creators, is going to debut on September the 22nd on Disney+. Plus. With Inside Star Wars Visions, StarWars.com will pull back the curtain on the series and find out about some of the starring heroes. We're going to start with Kara, who's going to be in The Ninth Jedi. This story imagines a galaxy in which the Jedi Order is long gone, but a mysterious master who's called Juro hopes to revive it. And central to this Jedi renaissance is Kara, who has never been trained in the ways of the Jedi, but holds a strong connection to the Guardians of Peace and Justice because of her father, who was a legendary lightsaber smith. So next up we have Carrie, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing some of these, and this is going to be in The Twins. The Twins is produced by Trigger, and this story follows the dark side siblings Carrie and Am, an almost flip version of the Skywalker saga's well-known brother and sister. But this story is not going to be a hero's journey. When the story begins, these twins already hold immense power, and both of these twins were created by the dark side. And next up we have Dan from The Elder, which is also a Trigger production, and explores the classic master Padawan relationship with the Jedi learner being known as Dan. This Padawan is impatient and sarcastic and he's got a lot to learn. His master, Tajin, is wise and cautious but trusting. So next up we have a fallen Jedi whose name is F, just simply F, and this is from the upcoming story The Village Bride. And finally, in the story called The Jewel, we're going to be introduced to a Jedi simply known as the Ronin. Ronin is a wanderer, an anti-hero, a mysterious warrior directly influenced by Toshiro Mifune and Kurosawa films like Yojimbo. I mean, ultimately, we don't know much until Visions drops, and I will keep you guys up to date giving you my full review, so I can't wait for that to drop. But otherwise, my dear Meglorians, this is where we part ways. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new, and a huge welcome if you are, and if you're feeling generous, please consider becoming a patron. You get exclusive access to content that's not found here on YouTube, you also get access to my Discord server, and much more. But otherwise, my dear friends, I'm Star Wars Meg, wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.